Hi, I'm Jared. I'm with CED here in Lincoln. Um, something recent that we've done that's been cool or helpful uh, for a customer is a contractor came in looking to mass produce some uh, labels. They had nothing but handheld Brady label printers, which is not the most efficient way to mass produce. So I did some research, I did some call-in, some tech support, and uh, got a hold of Handuit. And they uh, set me up with EasyMark tutorial. They 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 uh, stepped me through the whole process. Um, so in turn, I learned the ins and outs. Took it out to the job site to uh, the contractors, walked them through it, showed them how easy it was, um, showed them how it was going to make their life easy just to be able to print hundreds of labels at, all at once instead of type hand typing them in and and uh, just something that's going to save them a bunch of time and uh, hopefully a lot of money. What kind of labels were they? Uh, Panduit. What kind of Panduit labels? Laser inkjet. Okay, so explain what those are. Uh, inkjet, so they don't have a, or they don't have a laser printer, so it's going to be an inkjet, just a standard um, computer printer that you can put these labels in. Uh, it prints uh, ink and then it dries and it's self-laminating, so when they wrap around they can well, withstand environmental um, stress, I guess you can say. Cool. Okay, I'm here to talk to you about enclosures. Um, the take home from all this is going to be your um, end of the Hoffman book here is going to have all of your, your technical information. It is key if you ever have any questions refer to this, it's got about everything you could possibly need to, uh, to figure out uh, an enclosure for somebody that's coming in. Um, you know, we're only going to cover a couple things, there's a ton of stuff in here that, that's useful. Uh, you got your NEMA UL ratings, industry standards, IEC classifications. Um, one that we used a lot on this test was chemical resistance, uh, EMI, EMI RFI, which is uh, electromagnetic compatibility radio frequency, uh, and then your hazardous locations, uh, standards, and ratings for everything. Scroll down. I highlighted most of the, the useful information here that we have, or, or that we use for the test, I should say. So right here is just a chart, your standard. Um, uh, NEMA ratings, type 1, type 12, type 12K, so on. But it's good to know that it doesn't necessarily go 1 to 12. One's not your uh, your least to 12 being the best. Type 1 is just your standard enclosure. It's going to protect protect you from uh, making contact with any electrical circuits. Uh, it's going to be your basic. Anytime you need an enclosure, that's your, your basic bare minimum. Um, it goes all the way up to 4X. Um, it all, and in between here, if you have any questions, you can refer to it. It's going to give you all the information you need. So this is just more ratings. It shows you um, kind of a, a, a scenario where somebody comes in and says they, they need, this is going to be outdoors, they need to protect it from windblown dust and rain or snow and sleet. You can come here, refer, say, okay, I can get them a type 3. A type 4 or 4x, uh, three, 3 or 4 probably being the most um, financially uh, economical. E e most economical, uh, yeah, there, thank you, uh, economical for them. Um, and then this is just going to be more terms. If somebody calls and says, you know, I got damp location, dust tight, you can go through and it'll give you. So they, they, they call it any dust type, you can look up and say, okay, uh, type 3, 4, 4X, 12, 12K, and 13 enclosures all meet that requirement. And then you can talk to them more about any other standards that they need to meet or price situations that they need to uh, accommodate. Okay, and then this is IP rating. This isn't really used as much here as it is uh, everywhere else. Uh, North America and Canada usually use NEMA ratings. Uh, and there is no direct cross for NEMA to IP or IP to NEMA, but you can get um, relatively close. You just have to go through uh, IP67, which is a common one, protect against tools wires, over, and it protects against dust, and then uh, protects against effects of immersion between 15, so water, it's going to help protect against water. Um, 
IP only is uh, used for ingress protection is what it stands for. It only does um, water and solid objects. It doesn't do any uh, corrosion or anything like that. So here we get into your chemical resistance. Um, this was a big one for our test that we took. If somebody calls and they say, I've got a 10% solution of aluminum sulfate, you can come to this chart, um, go through and figure out what your best um, solution is for their situation. And it, it talks about it in the uh, information above, but the 112 stands for um, how long it withstands that certain situation. So the first one is 30 days, the second one is 60 days, and the third number is uh, 90 days. So when you're going through, um, you're obviously going to want to pick the one that's all ones. It's going to be withstand the, the situation for the longest. There it is right there, too. What's the and, and there's all sorts of... Um, uh, scenarios, different types of solutions, chemicals, acids, water, you know, everything that you could probably ever come across is, is a good chance that it would be here. So that's more solutions. Talking about the enclosures. I think it's a little way. So right here is, uh, we had a question on the test here about uh, EMI and RFI. Uh, so electrical, uh, electromagnetic compatibility, um, there are certain standards out there that um, some places need to uh, abide by, and if that is, you know, if you have issues with electromagnetic uh, or radio frequency uh, issues, you use one of these boxes that have a special uh, gasket to keep everything in or, in turn, keep everything out. And here's just some more um, explanations of what electromagnetic interference is. And I think there's one more slide down here a ways. So this is your hazardous locations, your standards. Um, class, it just walks you through, somebody calls says I have a class two div one uh, location, what can you do for me? You can look here at this chart and it will show you that you need a NEMA type 9 enclosure it's, and it will tell you pressurized enclosures it has to be inspected to be approved. Um, you got more classes, class 2 div 2, class 3 locations. Hoffman doesn't make any class 1 or uh, class 1 div 1 or class 1 div 2 boxes. Weird fact for you. Mm -hmm. It's stated right there. Um, so I think you can scroll down a little bit more, Wes. I don't think that there's anything else. Yep. No, I think that's good. In there. That's what we wanted to see is the explanation of fumble around through it to uh, when in doubt go to chapter 13 in yeah. the Hoffman catalog and you can become the enclosure specialist right. in your area. That's all it takes. A little bit of reading. Nice. Well done. Good job, Derek. Thank you. So Got next it. week, Cotton lighting. Mode. Who's going to dare take on the lighting challenge and do the lighting instruction? That's why I